Hail to the bus driver, bus driver, bus driver. Hail to the bus driver, bus driver. Man, he drinks and he cusses, he stinks up the buses. Hail to the bus driver, bus driver, man. That's from the episode where Principal Skinner had to drive the bus. Because Otto, something crazy was happening with Otto. I forget what, but... Uh, didn't he have to get his license again? Like yeah, he had to get his license again, yeah. yeah. That was an earlier episode, too. Huh. But, uh, and then there's the famous uh, Treehouse of Horror episode. It's like one of the earlier ones, like the fourth one, fifth one, something like that. Where it's a parody of Twilight Zone. Or the Twilight Zone where uh, the guy thinks there's something on the wing of the plane. Huh. And Bart thinks that there's, there's some gremlin chewing up the wheel of the bus. He's like, he's chewing up the wheel. You gotta stop, you gotta stop. And nobody believes him. And yeah, so the bus the bus is like almost like a character of, yeah. of its own in The Simpsons. And this is a this is a 3D recreation of the bus on The Simpsons. It's kind of interesting how they kind of make these cars, these cartoon vehicles that are inspired by real vehicles. Yeah. But they're not those vehicles. Like one of one of the Simpsons cars, isn't it supposed to kind of be like a Cadillac? Yeah, that's from Simpson or Homer's pink car. It's a pink Cadillac. But it's just so beat up and goofy you can't really identify it. From the aesthetics of it and everything. I love you for your pink Cadillac. Something, something. Leather seat. Riding in the back. Now we're black and white. And I don't know why. Cool. We just I don't know why the hell that happened. Yeah, so have the have the Martians invaded? Have we become a science fiction movie from the fifties? Oh, the picture of the black and white? Yeah, it's black and white. Yeah, it it does that because I have it set that way and it'll still record in color. It just does that at ten o'clock. Oh, to save it's power. What the night mode too? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering, like, what the hell are you talking about? The black and white. Well, yeah. Yeah. Waving to the girls, feeling out of sight, spending all my money on a Saturday night. One of uh, Springsteen's better songs. Why well, like this cable one where you got eighty-seven channels and nothing's on? You know what pink Cadillac means, right? Um, probably something. With it's a vagina. Yeah, but uh, now this video will never be monetized again because of these words. Vagina! <laughs> so. Filthy. Filthy video. Well, this is a great start to a children's bus video. Hey, look, if, if uh, Gwyneth Paltrow can make candles that smell like her vajayjay, yeah. And that's disgusting. Have you heard about that? The goop experiment or something like that. It's a it's a Netflix show where she it's this all this fake health shit. Well, it's like a fake alternative health oh, yeah. thing that she does. And they actually make candles that smell like their private parts and then also smell like what they're they're um I'm done. I'm good. Let's talk about the goddamn bus, okay? I don't wanna talk about where people are sticking their the juices. Their yeah, juices. Whatever, yeah. And it's disgusting. Uh -huh. It's like the nastiest type of body worship. It's like, you know, there's this whole thing like, oh, you shouldn't be ashamed about your body. It's like, yeah, but you also should worship it. Yep, frankly. Yeah. And that's, that is 100% relevant to the Simpsons uh, bus because, yeah. It stinks like a body. It's a stinky school bus. Well, yeah. But well, also, what? No, go ahead. So there's variations within buses and styles. Most school buses are either the blunt nose ones where the engine's right under the seat, or like the older ones are like this. Those blunt nose ones are really weird, and I've noticed that they tend they tend you tend to see them in more urban areas. Yeah, it's easier for them to turn the buses. It costs more money though for that, but it's easier for the bus driver to turn it, and it's harder for the mechanics to work on it too. Lots of seats in here. And the drivers, the drive, the driving, the steering wheel, it's pretty detailed on the inside. Yeah. But um, yeah, it seems like you know when I was 
up until a few years ago, it seemed like they were using the very same school buses for like 30 years. Yeah. But now you are seeing ones that kind of look a little bit newer. Well, but some I, of them run on propane and propane accessories, or natural gas, or whatever. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, when I rode the bus in school, uh, it was bus 13. Huh. And the buses ran from, I think there was a 12, 12, to, 12 to 14, I think. Huh. No, it was actually 11 to 14. Actually, there might have even been a 10. So I Whoa. think it was like 10, 10 to 14. Yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, and like some alternated. I don't think they were all used at the same time. Huh. But like 10 to 14, we were bus 13, and bus 13 was an unlucky bus. <laughs> as, as usual, there were no seatbelts, yeah. which I always thought was interesting about school buses, that there are no seatbelts, you know. Uh-huh. Because you have seen pictures of your videos, like footage of like, a bus wiping out and like all the kids getting like thrown to one side of the bus. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, that bus broke down a lot and it got stuck a lot. Sometimes it gets stuck in the mud. Sometimes it would get stuck in the snow. And uh, you know, Darlene, our bus driver, this old, this nice older lady, she'd get stuck and it would go. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we'd all be watching her like a hawk. Yeah. And she would pick up the CB radio and say, and say, bus 13 to base. And that's how we knew that, that she was stuck and that we were yeah. going to be late for school. And we'd all cheer. We'd all be like, <laughs> yeah, yay. And she'd turn around like, knock it off. Yeah. There was this other older guy. He, he I forget which one he drove. Maybe 11. But he was an older guy and, uh, his name was Francis, yeah. and his thing was he'd look in the mirror and he'd mouth things to you, yeah, like almost like he thought he was talking, but nothing was coming out, like, like that. Yeah. And sometimes, like if, if a guy, if it, he didn't like kids opening the windows, yeah. So whenever he saw saw a window open, he'd say, "Hey you, shut your window." That was his catchphrase. It's like, "Hey you, shut your window." Your buses didn't have radios in them, did they? Because they all did. Oh, so they could play the radio and listen to it? Well, no, no, not, not radios that you could like play. AMF, AMF. No, 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 okay. just CV radios, yeah. yeah. But uh, it sucked for us because we were, at on our route, we were the first kids to get picked up and the last ones to get dropped off. Yeah. So it was miserable. And it's not like you can do your homework or anything because there's so much, like, vibration and jumbling around. Yeah. Like you know, you hand in an assignment and you end up in special ed. <laughs> <laughs> so you end up riding the short bus instead of the long bus. Yeah. So, um, Were they bluebird buses? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know for sure, but I, if I had to guess, I think they were. Yeah. But yeah, that was quite, that was some funny experiences. Uh, and of course, the, the older kids rode in the back and the bigger the bigger a troublemaker a kid was, the fur, the further to the back they'd want to sit. Um, where did you sit? Well, it depended on my age. Oh, okay. But like I think I mostly rode it when I was pretty young. Yeah. So I rode as I, I, I tried to sit as far back as I could. Yeah. Like up until the last four rows or something. Huh. Like you sit back as far as you can until you but I think that um, if there weren't any older kids riding that day, that they would let you sit further back. When you're saying older, is this kindergarten to high school or kindergarten to what? Kindergarten to generally like kind of low high school, like 16. Because like 16 is when you get your license. Oh, so you guys had it for all grades and everybody it, started school and ended school at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it was available for, yeah, yeah, elementary and high, high school. And um, it, uh, and they would stop at the, at the, yeah, they'd stop at the high school first and then at the other school. Oh. Huh. Um, Did you have a middle school at all or was it all just? It was, it was all together. The, huh. the, well, the, there was a secondary school. Yeah. That was the middle and high school. Huh. But, um, 
But yeah, that pretty much covers all of my bus experiences. There came a point where my parents just decided to pick us up and drop us off because they got they just got annoyed with the with the school bus. Like they knew that we didn't like having to ride the bus so much and they they just started going ahead and picking us up and typically we'd ride into town and get something to eat and whatnot. So they just kinda kinda changed up our lifestyle and uh, didn't uh, didn't ride the bus so much. Yeah. Did you have a lot of experiences riding the bus? Oh yeah. We even knew that little harp of what we said about the bus and the aesthetic and all that. Um, my first bus memory, they did the buses by the year and the number of buses they bought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was that book that your your mom made for you. Yeah. To did. tell you not to be afraid to, about of missing the bus. Yeah, so there's a lot of... Because that is something that I had a lot of anxiety about. I actually did, too. I was afraid of missing the bus a lot. Felt like you get in trouble. But when you think about it, it's like, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, oh man, I don't have to go to school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a great line from uh, the the show Home Movies. The same guy who made Bob's Burgers yeah. made Home Movies. Home Movies was an older show that, in my opinion, is actually kind of better than Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I liked Home Movies, and I kind of watched that guy's career too. Yeah. There was there were a couple of shows before that. There was uh, Science Court and there was uh, Doctor Katz. Okay. But Home Movies was kind of in the middle of his career, yeah. and uh, and it's I, I in my opinion it, it's probably his best. But he's Coach McGurk is riding the bus because mm-hmm. his car doesn't work or something, yeah. so he has to ride the bus. And he's like, man, this this man, it's depressing here on the bus. Why is everybody so depressed? And Brendan says, uh, Coach, everyone's depressed because they're going to school. You should see this place on the way home. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing, too, like, the buses, we came from kind of different schools. Yours was more a rural one. I don't know what the the thing was, but mine was one of the bigger ones in, in the Iowa area. And, like, it was just crazy riding the bus. And it was, it was interesting experiences with it though because they their numbering system was like the year and the first one i rolled was 8708 and that was the year it was built in the eighth bus they bought that year wow and, um, so it was a pretty old bus at that point eh, like 10 ish years old it's probably a little older um but that was my first memory of the bus and it was a bluebird and glenn was the bus driver and this was just for kids that went to alternate kindergarten this wasn't even for I mean, so that's the whole districting thing of, of busing. I thought it was interesting because uh, I had one for elementary school, I had one for middle school, and I had one for high school. Yeah. And uh, um, the neighborhood I grew up in was pretty interesting because it was all pretty affluent uh, custom homes and, and all that stuff. But then they put a Section 8 development in the backyard. So how everybody's like, not in my backyard and, and all that. And it was, it was interesting. Once that place opened up, they actually added bus attendance on the bus because it was a it was kind of a clash of cultures because there was environment there and there was always kind of drama. And I remember some kids from the apartments they called them ghetto wood at the time um, actually took BBs and were shooting in one of the other kids' windows. Yeah, and all that stuff. But yeah, like adults who have who would sit on the bus just to kind of watch and watch the kids get harassed. Because <laughs> there's nothing they could do, really. Yeah, you can't whoop the kids. And you can't like, stop it. And yeah. just like the other person. Especially since most of them were like older women. It's like, what are they going to do, you know? Yeah. Like, I remember one, um, it was like, there was a story on Good Morning America, America years ago where yeah. this woman got called all kinds of names by these, by these kids. Like, you're fat and stupid and like, you're, you know, Horrible names. Yeah. yeah, just like, just all the whole bus ride. She's just sitting there and like, having all these horrible names called. But, it's like, it, it, and so that video went viral and they did a, like a, the equivalent of a GoFundMe. This was before GoFundMe. Yeah. But, she ended up get, getting 
a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Just true. just for getting called fat and stupid. I just thought that was kind of ridiculous because it's like, look, you know, this woman doesn't deserve a quarter of a million dollars just because some kids called her names on the bus. <laughs> that happens every time a kid. It's sort of like when bells ring. Every time a bell rings, a teacher says some fat kid gets money for being called fatty on a bus. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. That's, yeah. But, uh, I remember there was this one incident. It was a substitute driver. It was this younger woman. And she was not, you know, she, she was not prepared for the job. Yeah. And there was this one kid on on the route who was a foster kid, and yeah. he, he had a lot of anger issues. Yeah. And it was him and his foster sitter, sister, and they got into an argument on the bus. And this kid stands up and says, "Is like, I hate you, you asshole!" And the, the woman, uh, the woman, like you can see her in the mirror. She she just like gasps, like she's like almost like drives off the road because she's so shocked. Wow. And. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, lady, you're um, you're not gonna cut it as a substitute bus driver. But those bus drivers, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. Because they get ipers. They're um, teamsters, a lot of them. Almost all the bus drivers that I've talked to, and all the even small towns, big cities, whatever, the teamsters pretty much run the buses. But they get ipers because it's a it's a it's a public job. Yeah. And they get so they get and then they they get the the middle of the the, the, the only work. Uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, there was actually this uh, this bus driver I used to hang out with at McDonald's. He was part of like the group that that go that went there every day, and he would like do his route. He would go to McDonald's and hang out McDo- at McDonald's for a while, and then in the afternoon he would go and like do his do his uh, route again. And so he had that middle of the day free to do whatever he wanted. Um, I've heard of I've heard of uh, some of them they like they sleep. That's when they sleep is in between uh, doing their morning right. route and their afternoon route. But uh, it's just kind of an interesting way to live, like having like working like a couple couple of hours in the morning and then a couple of hours in the afternoon. Yeah, but they make pretty good money. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty sweet deal. I, you know, I had that friend who, like, uh, uh, I tried to actually get them to be, be become a bus driver. Yeah. You know, like this this friend who was looking at a lot of different jobs at the time, and I think he kind of thought he was too good to be a bus driver. But I told him, uh, "Dude, you could do a lot worse." Yeah. Well, when I mean, you think about it, it's like you have no nights, no weekends. You get the summers off. You know. You get to drive a big, this big vehicle, this big heavy vehicle. Well, I honestly feel like if I was a bus driver, I'd be like a prison guard, where they just like drive kids into the prison. You know, but at least you're also... be a great job for a sociopath. <laughs> It'd be a great job for, like, some guy who just wants to terrorize kids and make them miserable. Yeah. Well, it's like, I'm going to take you somewhere you hate, and I'm going to be a dick the whole way. The quiet bus. You can't think to shut the hell up. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know... The Billy Madison, Chris Farley yeah. as the bus driver in that. Yeah. That's one of the funniest things. That's one of the funniest movies. But he, in particular, that movie, is the bus driver. <laughs> you know, the kid throws a sandwich in his head. He goes, <laughs> It almost drives off the road. He's like, I'll turn this damn bus around. <laughs> That'll end your precious little field trip pretty damn quick, won't it? <laughs> And he's like, his face is turning red as a beet. And like, and then there's that thing where he like, he stops the guy so that he can look under that teacher's skirt. <laughs> he goes, that Veronica Brad is one hot to mine. <laughs> yeah, that's, he, he was, yeah, that was, that's one of the funniest. That's probably the funniest Chris Farley ever got. Wow. Like, he was funny. He was funny. Yeah. But I mean, like, that's probably the most he ever made me laugh was in that movie. But um, we're sh- we're doing a lot of kind of memories and pop culture. Well, that's kind of what I wanted this to be. I've already done two videos just on on uh, 
buses, and I'm going to do a lot more on buses, but those I'm going to do pretty much on my own. They'll be two, three-minute ones. I didn't do one on The Simpsons. Yeah. And we had, we did pop culture. Yeah, we did pop culture, but we did everything from candles to crazies yeah. to... Yeah. Buses. Oh, did they have cameras on your bus? No. Okay, the ones that I all went to, they did. I think that was probably some sort of district lawsuit thing because they were they were pretty paranoid about litigation. I bet you now they got even more cameras. They used to have one black and white one on every bus so they could see where all the kids were at. Yeah, after that kid got decapitated. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. And it was just... Because, like, I was, like, it's, like, that's what they always said, like, to try to keep kids from sticking their head out the windows, like a kid died that way. Yeah. Well, sort of like you shooting your Red Rider BB gun, too. You just shoot your eye out. Yeah. Obviously. But, uh, yeah, The Simpsons, one of the greatest shows of all time, up until about 2003. Hey, that's when this uh, bus was actually made, is the capstone of the Johnny Lightning 2003 Simpsons school bus. Yeah. And that's had about had, had, the show had about three hundred good episodes, but it fell victim to the basically what what all of entertainment has fallen victim to in the last twenty or thirty years is just not letting things die, yeah. just 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 milking everything out of them until they like until they become uh, unprofitable, and then even a little while after that. Well, they also want to make them totally unrecognizable. They'll be like the cultural rem, remnant of what you remembered, but a lot of the other stuff is just totally different. Yeah. You know, because I mean, the Simpsons they they do all the stupid pop culture stuff now, and the technology's changed with them. All the too many celebrities. Yeah. That was when they. That was when that was one of their first mistakes was having too many celebrities on the show, because it got weird. It's like, why is Jay Leno on the Simpsons? Like. Tony Hawk. Yeah. Tony, you know, Tony Hawk was in the 300th episode. Oh, well, that's kind of silly, man. I remember the Tony Hawk one, so that's kind of like their send-off from when the downward spiral hit. Yeah. But, Matt Groening went on record as saying that he kind of prefers to not work with celebrities. Yeah. But, of course, the network wants him to. The network... Yeah. Well, that gets more views, because then yeah. it's a double hitter. And he said if, he, if, if they must work with celebrities, he prefers for them to play a character instead of themselves. Yeah. Because then it's like, what is Lady, what's Lady Gaga doing at the, at the school? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it just doesn't make sense, you know. She is right here, and she's right now. She's gonna promote her new CD, or something like that, you know, because like, it's the media ownership concentration is such that, uh, yeah. you know, they can just cross-promote each other. Well, it's like, this is The Simpsons, not Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but it's basically turned into a variation of that. It's like Sunday Night Simp. <laughs> Sunday Night Simp. <laughs> That's perfect, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking of that. They lost their son. They just Sunday Night Simp him. Yeah. yeah every, every episode that I care to see, I have all saved on my hard drive. So that, that makes me feel good. Yeah. The complete worthwhile seasons. Yeah. So. Like the, the, the definitive Captain Unusual collection episodes. Nice. So. But, uh, yeah, The Simpsons, I appreciate, they were, they were just such a product of their time. Yeah. Like, of the 90s. They did that thing where they kind of, um, they kind of made fun of sitcoms. They made yeah. fun of like the whole the concept of like the dad being an idiot and being a fat idiot yeah. and the mother being smart and the then there's a brainy sister and a brother who's a troublemaker and it was like kind of a parody. It was a parody of uh, it was a parody, but at the same time it was like an anti because it was also like there was a there's an episode where Bart was talking about how. TV families are always hugging and tackling issues. Why can't they be more like us? You know? Oh, yeah. Because, like, a lot of 80s sitcoms were all about teaching a valuable lesson. Yeah, and these guys are just rude and trashy and obnoxious. Although, ironically, The Simpsons actually had some of the most meaningful episodes of television yeah. I've ever seen. 
they, they actually had some episodes that were very, you know, and in a way they were actually, in terms of, of, of like, families, they were one of the best families on TV, despite their issues. Yeah. They actually were a functioning family that cared about each other and, you know. The South Park and Family Guy are just like, just trash in some way that way. The Simpsons did try to keep it, yeah, but they yeah. did have a genuine care for each other. Family Guy is what would happen if you took The Simpsons and removed all meaning from it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, hey, cut away, gag. Yeah. Cut away, gag. They're like, wow, that's as wacky as Joe Ball there farting a ukulele song. And then yeah. And be like, yeah. Yeah, Family Guy actually make, kind of makes fun of the whole concept of meaning. So are they like a post, what the hell are they? Or postmodernist philosophy then? Yeah, they're almost like a postmodern version of The Simpsons. Wow. Because like, they mock, you know, the whole like, you know, like if Peter learns a lesson. He forgets it right away. And it's not a real lesson yeah. either. You know, it's like not a real, it's like, it's just totally fake. Well, they're like, and that's why I won't get my sex change operation again. Yeah. You know, or just something really goofy. And I get a kick out of Family Guy. Yeah, there's funny aspects. It can be very funny, but it, it just. Uh, it's mostly like a series of one liners kind of goofy stuff like the story a lot of times is kind of lacking yeah you know they're more like dude this is funny let's do this you know and then yeah South Park's an interesting one I don't know if you've watched much of it I've watched some of it some of it's just really really good and they're really on point and they're like totally uncensored because they're on Comedy Central you know yeah some of my favorite episodes of The Simpsons are ones where it's mainly about Homer and Lisa yeah. because they're so different. But there are a few episodes where they they find a way to connect with each other. And th those episodes are really uh, profound. And then there are other ones too. Like there are ones that say it, go, it kind of also goes with like Marge and Bart. Yeah. Because they're very different from each other, yeah. you know. It's like episodes like that where they were two characters who are different. Sometimes even Bart and Lisa, where they find a way to sort of to sort of connect with each other. It's, so it's, character driven stories, you think. Those are probably the most like moving episodes. Yeah. Like they're the most profound yeah. Like um and, and the Simpsons still did that. Like they still you can tell they still wanted they still wanted to not necessarily teach a lesson, but it was it just wasn't completely devoid of meaning like like yeah. on the like family guy. Yeah. Or South Park or you know. Bob's Burgers is kinda weird because it touches on meaning. Yeah. But just a little bit. <laughs> like just a little. Like it's it's mostly just kind of bullshit. Well, there was this goofy video I watched where this guy talked about how Bob's Burgers really addresses the class struggle in a multimedia context better than almost any other media. Because he's this working class guy who's trying to own his own restaurant, and he just keeps getting barrier after barrier after barrier, you know what I mean? Yeah. All that stuff. So it was, that was kind of interesting. Well, and that's that's probably where most of the meaning and most of the yeah mo most of the genuine meaning meaning from Bob's Burgers comes from is, is the fact that he's always kind of scraping by. Yeah, he always find finds a way to sort of just barely get by. Huh. But uh, yeah, so the buses are interesting. <laughs> So I, I sure hope this is in color. It is. What what time are we at? We're at twenty nine minutes and thirty I seconds. Think we'll probably end at thirty minutes. That sound good to you? Oh crap! I just thought of like ten more minutes worth of bus stuff to talk about. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not going to cut you off of the free speech zone. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But the back of the bus is cool. It looks like a door. Well, oh, hell no! You talking about the back of the bus? How dare you? First of all. <laughs> 
You're not in Alabama. <laughs> you're not on this. It's it's a diff, it's a public school bus. You're not black. And you're not Rosa Parks. There you go. Okay. Oh, like, video size limit almost reached. Like, subscribe, share. Okay, and subscribe to Captain Unusual. And Walt. That's the most important thing of all. Yeah, you'll be featured in it, so. Okay, yes, and Wealthplex. Okay. Ta-da.